The news is official. Mark Turgeon is out. We'll be back in a few minutes here on Coons Ford Presents the Sports Maven. Well, here's a name that, that's come up. All right. Uh, the, the young man who is at George Mason. The guys at Tennessee like him. What's his name, Mason? Oh, just Kim English. Kim English. No, no chance. That's not a big enough name. Maryland has got to finally act like they're the program that, with the stadium that reflects it. Maryland has an on-campus, nearly 18,000-seat basketball stadium. And Wayne, I've said this to you. I think I've said this to everybody uh, that we have here. What school with the size stadium that Maryland has would, ex- would accept the results that we've seen under Mark Turgeon? And the list is nearly none. I'll throw another one out there, and it would take a lot of money. It would take a lot, but it's Rick Barnes, who's long been known as a Maryland guy, the coach of Tennessee right now. Uh, Do the Terps have a shot? Really, how can you use this hire to prove that Maryland is a top 15 basketball job? That that is where I think many people see this program as what it belongs as. This is Bruce Posner. You're listening to Coons Ford presents the Sports Maven. And by now, we've all heard the news. I guess everybody, I got the whole Terp Talk crew here with Todd Carton. Wayne Viner and Mason, uh, it's up on uh, TerpTalk.com. It's up on YouTube. But this morning, we're on the Sports Maven. Guys, I guess the fan base got what it wished for. They wanted Turgeon out, uh, and it was from almost A to Z. And uh, when I was sitting there with Mason the other day, and I heard this, like, thunderous, thunderous comment that, what is that? I said to Mason, what are they saying? And he said, he said, fire Turgeon. And when that happened, it started to go through my mind. And my first comment is this, and I'm going to let everybody give their share of it. I think there was a lot of pressure on Damon, a a lot of pressure. But there's been a lot of losses this fall. And I think that the natives were restless. I mean, football got that ball, thank heavens. All right. But it was still a 6-6 season. Wayne, I'll start with you, buddy. Everybody had lost faith in this program. Uh, People who put the money up don't want to go to the games anymore. They're picked to win just a handful of games the rest of the season. There's no offense. The 11th year of excuses. The press conferences have become tired. They're a joke. Everybody's terrific. Can't get it done. There's no offense to speak of. The number one recruit that they crowed about getting, who can shoot the ball. They can't find a way for him to get on the court. He transfers out on uh, Thursday. he become a, a, a joke. This is a high-profile gig with some good players, and they can't figure out how to run an inbounds pass again. Todd, it's more, it's more the ahead. again than it is what happens. It's, just, it's, it's a wash, rinse, and repeat. And I'll go over to Todd Carton, who's seen a lot of this up close. Well, it's interesting because I was talking to some friends who were at the game Wednesday, I guess it was Wednesday night. Uh, and they said that that even the students were booing Turgeon when he came out on the court. That's a really bad sign. And Wayne, when you talk about struggling to run inbounds passes, I, you guys may remember, and I think it was the uh, Wisconsin game that they lost a few years ago. And I was texting or calling you guys. I went ballistic. I think that's the moment, frankly, that Turgeon completely lost any faith I had in, uh, for me personally that I had in him. Gained a little bit back with the way he handled the team late last year. But this year has been based on the expectations and, and the way they've promoted the team. This year has been just a disaster. Maryland's legal newspaper has named the Jacklets Law Group the very best best personal injury trial firm, and best civil litigation firm in the entire state. If you're hurt, listen to my mom and bite back with the big dogs, the Jack Litch Law Group. At 855-BIG-DOG-1. Don't just get a lawyer. Get, get the, the lawyers. The expectations were high. And the results were not there. I think the George Mason uh, loss was very, uh, let's call it problematic. Uh, Mason, the youth of the group, 
your take. I think you might have seen this coming more than any of us. I have a but, question for Mason to, to lead him in. You said you've been to a lot of games in your 20 years on this planet. And what's the one thing you haven't actually heard or been part of was? Oh, uh, at Maryland, at least, uh, fans booing any coach. I, I've yet to see that. Now, there were some fire Edsel chants when Maryland lost to Virginia at the end of his first year. But I really have not seen a crowd as ignited in booing a coach as as the scene was on Wednesday night. And no, I'll tell you guys this. No kid my age is committing to a program where the coach is getting booed. It becomes impossible to recruit. You can't bring anybody new in. And let's face it, Maryland, while a wealthy school overall, has few and far between big money athletic donors. And when those handful of people want a coach gone, that coach is going to be gone. I think this was the case. The crowds haven't been there. The support for the team isn't there. And really, this is a result of just years of frustration. Uh, Maryland used to not really be the most talented basketball team, but a well-coached one. Under Turgeon, it's it's just hasn't been that. It's been the reverse. They've been very talented, and the coaching just has not been there. Network Solutions, Managed IT, and technical support, Viner Forgates makes your company work. Solutions to protect your business from WatchGuard, including firewalls and endpoint protection. Protect your company and make your company work with solutions from Viner Forgates. I, 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 you know, I'm not going to sit there and take his side because he's already gone. It doesn't really matter anymore. I don't think it was that bad. I really don't. He won a lot of games in the Big Ten, devoted his life to uh to the terps winning did everything humanly possible that he could but here's the bottom line we kept coming up short we kept Wayne how many games have you and me traveled to that we lost in other words when I said that you and me and Mason to only go to games that have significance we don't travel to games uh maybe I do a little bit to to make sure we win I know I went to Northwestern and I went to, you know, of course I went to a lot of games under Gary that we always won for the most part, but <clears throat> it's like we go to Barclays center. We go to, we go to Indiana, we go to the Chicago. I mean, how many times do we come home disappointed Wayne? You know, I'd rather focus on the ones like the Michigan state game where Maryland unexpectedly won with a great comeback. I was there. I was there. The, the Turgeon methodology of having a great point guard and who's going to make all the rest of the ills go away evaporated when he didn't have, doesn't have that player. And without one elite, true elite player, the fact he doesn't have a system has become quite apparent. There were no great recruits on the board for Mark Turgeon coming in. Mason Viner, Mason Viner has said that to me often this year, that he doesn't have what makes him win. And that's, Mellow Trimble, Anthony Cowan. Give, I mean, they won with those guys. They didn't win enough. They didn't no, go to the I, next level. But you can't even, tell me you can't tell me they weren't competitive because they were. Oh, I this mean, isn't about the fact that he won five uh, fifty-seven point one percent of his games in the Big Ten. It isn't about the fact they finished in the top four. This isn't you know if that was football, and I think we've all had this conversation. Mike Loxley wins 57.1% of his games at Maryland, he probably gets a statue in front of the stadium. But Turgeon, you, you got to win. This basketball and lacrosse, you got to win. I mean, this happened with, with your guy in lacrosse 10 years ago. They just couldn't win the national championship and they had to make a change. No, Todd, he was told, he was, Dave Cottle was told, you don't make the final four, we're making a move. I think, right. final, I think final four is more or less the standard of lacrosse. And lacrosse and basketball, it's you got to actually make the Sweet 16, and and they couldn't do it, they just couldn't do it. And at the end, it looked the pained Mark Turgeon. I encourage you all to go back and find that press conference. The man was at a complete loss the other night. He he had had it, so yeah, I and think, I think that was, contributed to Wayne. I think that that contributed to this mutual decision uh, for both yeah. of the. It, it was I, it was mutual decision for Damon Evans. I'm not well, sure. Well, obviously, obviously, Damon Damon is the primary mover here. But I, I'm getting the feeling that that Turgeon probably didn't push back too hard to to keep the job. Uh, 
with regard to that. And uh, Bruce and I talked last night as I was coming home from the women's game. And I, and I said that if the interesting thing is that if you, if you set aside the postseason failures and, and look at Turgeon's overall record at Maryland, it's very much in line with what, we, what Maryland got out of Gary Williams and Lefty Brazell, just in terms of wins and losses. It's where it, it's not getting to, to the making any progress in the Big Ten tournament. It's losing in the not, never getting to the Sweet 16 in, in Maryland. You know, Maryland had that incredible run under Gary Williams where they made 10 straight or 12 straight NCAA tournaments. And and but you were all you all, except for Mason, are have been around long enough to remember when people would complain about Gary Williams. We're never getting past the Sweet 16. He's a Sweet 16 coach. We're never getting past it. And as I've said on many occasions, that was true until the two years that it wasn't true. And then it was true after that. All right. I want to switch real quick. We got uh, about eight minutes left in this segment. Who's next? All right. We're going to go around the horn. Who is next? Who's the guy to replace the guy who replaced the legend? The guy who replaces the legend has a tough time of making it happen. Turgeon was always haunted by the shadow of Gary Williams' success. Yeah, nobody's well, going to be haunted by Turgeon. Nobody's going to be <laughs> haunted not. by Turgeon, right? Nobody's going to say. Big fear is that you will be, and you'll look back and go, "That was pretty good when Turgeon was here. We were top four Big Ten team." You got to go up from here. You can't go sideways. Mason looks into this stuff nonstop. Who's on your holiday wish list for the Maryland Terrapins? Guys, I got to say it. I don't really have a coach that I really want here. Now, the names are being thrown around all over the place, but who's when I look at it, around, you know, who, who Evan is Woolard been... is one that a lot of people are looking at. I like at. him. And then the one, the guy that I really want to see, and I can't believe I'm saying that, is Rick Pitino. Maryland will win if Rick Pitino is their coach. How old are you, Bruce? 71. How old is Rick Pitino? Rick, I need a Rick Pitino. I hate him, but I got news for you. I don't care about it. It's not who I like or not. It's about who could win. And Rick Pitino, if for so, – hey, Larry Brown, I'd bring him back. All right? Todd, you know I don't want, I don't want an up-and-comer. I don't want an up-and-comer. I want somebody of that nature, not Larry Brown, but of that nature – that can make it happen right away. And uh, I, I don't know if he's there. And again, what I'm afraid is that we're going to have some mid-major make a great run. And that's going to be the guy that they select. All right. Uh, from a mid-major, give him. Okay. So let's go a, over who actually year. is on this list. The Ryan Odom. He was at UMBC. He's out West now. Does he make your list, Todd? Uh, I, I don't think so. I, I think if this move had happened last year, Ryan Odom would be on my list. I, I don't think he's coming back. Uh, I think he, he, uh, and I don't think he'd be, the, the fans would be happy with Ryan Odom. I don't think they'd Bruce, like the, the style of play. A big enough name. It's right. If you could get out, you wanted listen. Ray Lewis at one point to be the Maryland football coach because of the name recognition. Would you take Steve Blake if Maryland could get not ready him as a basketball coach? He's not ready. He's not ready. You know, I, would, I, I wish Juan Dixon was ready, but he, he's not. You need someone who's had a list of the final four who's looking for, for a job and looking to move. Maybe some, you know, fits that bill because what, but I don't know if Petito you know, could get past all the stuff that happened, at, uh, you know, in his career. I don't know if they could turn their eyes to that. I mean, he, he was involved in some pretty heavy stuff. I don't, I don't know. I really don't know, but I do know. Who, one who's thing. your pick then? My pick right now. I don't have, I've got to think about it. And, uh, you know, I was in love with Shaka smart for a while. He went to Texas. He didn't do much. I was disappointed. Uh, the name will come to me. I don't have it right now, but I want to tell you something. There's no question that Damon's job, his history with his uh, university is on the line with this pick. I think you'll all agree with that. Loxley looks like it might work out. It's, you know, making the bowl in his third year. Mason tells me they're going to win seven or eight games next year. If he's on that trend, if he's on that cycle, he's going to work out. He's okay. got to get a guy in here 
He's got to get a guy in here who's going to who can take us to the Sweet 16 next year. All right, or maybe in two years. Two There's no waiting years. time. Okay. So, Let's so you're telling me, Bruce, that that Damon's job is not on the line with hiring a new women's soccer coach? No, it's not. All right, <laughs> it's not. All right. Well, here's a name that that's come up. All right. Uh, the, the young man who is at George Mason. The guys at Tennessee like him. What's his name, Mason? Oh, just Kim English. Kim English. No, no chance. That's not a big enough name. Maryland has got to finally act like they're the program that with the stadium that reflects it. Maryland has an on-campus, nearly 18,000-seat basketball stadium. And Wayne, I've said this to you. I think I've said this to everybody uh, that we have here. What school with the size stadium that Maryland has would, ex- would accept the results that we've seen under Mark Turgeon? And the list is nearly none. I'll throw another one out there, and it would take a lot of money. It would take a lot, but it's Rick Barnes, who's long been known as a Maryland guy, the coach of Tennessee right now. Uh, do the Terps have a shot? Really, how can you use this hire to prove that Maryland is a top 15 basketball job? That That is where I think many people see this program as what it belongs as. Hey, you there's a, a couple. You hit a key point, though, Mason, and that's money. I mean, because even as a basketball program, Mark Turgeon was in the middle of the Big Ten in, in his salary. He made a, a, a little under $3 million a year, but there are five or six guys in the Big Ten who make more than Mark Turgeon. And the question is, can Maryland afford a Rick Barnes? Can they can they make that splashy hire? Do they have the money to do it? What's the name? I, I've heard some strange names uh, all right out there. And you got, you know, Bruce Pearl, maybe. Uh no, no, I'm just throwing names. And Bruce I'm just Pearl. instant reaction is he's too dirty. They're not going to hire him. Okay. Uh, that's one of the problems with hiring somebody with uh, a long history. You know, that there is a, there's usually baggage. We know there's no baggage with Turgeon. I'll give him that. At least, you know, I don't know of any baggage. Never heard of any baggage. But a uh, uh, Bruce Pearl, uh, I had a couple other names just slip my mind. But. Okay. Well, while you're thinking of that, I got a call from a Maryland insider that said, what if Danny Manning actually wins some games and brings in a Keith Gatlin or somebody as an assistant and makes us more of a Maryland program? One of the problems is there's no Maryland guys on that bench. It might just take one or two to mollify the big donors. Biggest point and, is whoever it is, he got to win. And I think that there's something to that. And I'll point it out right now. Bino Ranson leaves this program. And what happens the next year? Turgeon's gone. Maryland likes Maryland guys. Mike Loxley, the one of the reasons why I think he's even still around at this point, I'll throw it out there, is he's a Maryland guy. People know that he's respected around here, that he can recruit around here. The biggest knock on Turgeon, say whatever you will about what was on the court, is they can't recruit their own state. If you can recruit Maryland in basketball, you'll win a lot of games. But they brought in kids like the Mitchell Twins that absolutely did not work out and haven't worked out anywhere else. And really, you look at it, they got Jalen Smith. That's really it. Morcel, big Baltimore guy, but he's not top tier like the players around here are. He's a really good basketball player, but he's no top 10 players like what you get around here. When you How talk about being a Maryland guy, Mason, it's, re- it's, it's interesting because – one of, the, one of the other areas that Turgeon clearly lacked in, in was engaging old former Maryland guys. I, you know, look, I, I talked to a bunch of ex-Maryland basketball players and they, they say, you know, Turgeon just, he doesn't reach out to us. He doesn't seem to want us involved in the program. And that is so important in terms of building the loyalty of Todd. It is, but we're up against the wall here. Bruce, take her home. We got a lot more to talk about. We'll do it on Terp Talk on the, on Wednesday night. And, you know, it's the speculation begins, and we're still going to find out about what's going to happen with football, which is crucial. But the news is official. Mark Turgeon is out. We'll be back in a few minutes here on Coons Ford Presents the Sports Maven. <laughs> 